I just thought I'd share with you this antenna project. I've been working on it for a couple of months. And this is a Ron 9H50. It's 34 foot overall extended, but I left the sec next to the last section down. So it's only about 25 foot right now, 26 foot. What I did, I put it on a pulley system. You can see there. I didn't like screwing to the side of my house, but that was the only way I could figure to pull it up there. I'm gonna probably leave that top bracket off because it's got a cable on it. That little cable is a three millimeter and it's about a 1400 pound cable. Everything I did, I tried to go with a thousand pounds and up. So I've got a little spring tensioner on there with another cable strap inside of it, just in case if that spring ever broke, then the pole wouldn't come down. But basically I can let that pole down. I'll show, you, I'll show it to you here a little bit. I can let off on this winch. And of course the winch goes up to the cable goes through that bracket which I do clamp down and it goes up to that pulley and as I let it out that whole antenna mast they tell you not to pivot it but I'm not grabbing it from the base and pivoting it I'm, as you can see I'm pivoting it from about 15 foot so more than halfway up I'm, I've got my spring and my pivot point is at the very bottom way down here in this mass this is a really nice mass it locks down like this for each section and it's collapsible and where this bolt is here they send the cotter pin with it but i changed it out with uh, grade eight bolts because this upper piece of this mast has a little index ground out into it each section does and as you extend it up you can put a cotter pin or a bolt in it and you let it back down and turn it and it'll key itself into that bolt to keep it from twisting anymore so the bolts just basically it's not through it the bolt is through the, the pipe that's there and then the pipe above it sits down in it which means it also sleeves down in there i guess a foot or so from one section to the next so it's really nice the way it's done um i think ron did a real good deal i did find some others that i wasn't quite as thrilled with that one issue that I had was the truck freight. So this is my ground situation. This is my pivot base. As you can see, it pivots from the bolt at the bottom. And a real simple couple pieces of angle. And then I got channel at the bottom with the little foundations that I poured with galvanized half inch bolts. And um, so I wound up doing three forms, one on each side here and one out here at the tip and these little braces that, that you see here as this pole pivots down it, you can see this piece of channel that's coming up that's bolted to the bottom of the pole in two places there and there and it's a little over a foot tall but when it pivots it actually stays between these two braces that are here so it pivots down i'm sure you can get a picture of it but my cable, I left enough slack in my cable that when I bring it down, I don't have to unhook anything. You know, and it won't break the cable, which brings up the issue with the grounding. So what I did was I ran, you're supposed to run to your house ground, which is down here. I don't know if you can see it. It's barely visible. It's down in the ground here. So I ran a solid copper wire up to the side of the upright and then I made this grounding wire flexible so that when the mast pivots down it'll allow it to pivot down without breaking the ground wire or without me having to detach the ground wire so as it pivots down it just comes straight down to low enough point that I can actually uh, get to it to work on it This is just a little safety chain 
that I did. So when I'm working on it and I want to just put something on it so that it can't go anywhere. So I can just come back and hook this hook this chain up where it can't go anywhere. It's pretty stable like it is because it has tension on this cable right now. And I could tighten that or loosen it a little bit as much as I wanted to. Uh, but when it's down, I've got it made where it'll it'll lay down between my trailer and my garage there. And it'll land about the front of that trailer out there. So I'll walk out just a little bit while I'm talking and show you how it looks from the house. I um, I put the lava omnidirectional antenna on it. And it is a powered antenna. So I did have to put in a power plug inside my garage. So what I did, I ran the cable uh, from the antenna down to the base and then up on the wall and then over and up into the eave of my garage and then inside the garage I've, I put an electrical outlet up on one of the wall studs there and this is where the cable runs here you can see it running up and going over and into the underside of the eave of the garage so inside the garage, there, there's a plug that I put in there. And because uh, it is a powered antenna. And with this lava antenna, I went from 21 channels to 40, I think it was, or 42 channels. Something like that. I'm trying to find my sheet while I'm speaking, but I don't, I don't see it right in front of me. So anyway, I picked up a lot of channels. I went from um, I went from 18 channels to 41 channels. I'm sorry, and that's the ones that I'm. That's what I started with, and then that's what I have now. And I have 41. Some of them are are duplicate, but I was getting such a weak signal before that of all things my other antenna was in my attic so when i opened my refrigerator on one channel um it would fuzz out the signal was just almost weak enough that it wouldn't pick up so when i opened the refrigerator door for some reason it would fuzz out so with this one grounded properly and installed it's doing a really good job so far i've only had it up for a few days um and you know I, I went with the uh, quad shield cable to make sure it was shielded good and so i had to research the connectors a little bit i wound up with the ideal connectors for the quad shield and there's some youtubes on how to strip that uh, cable where it'll terminate properly and uh i didn't have any big issues and it's a little tough twist them on but it's not too bad um so the reason I did this is so that if I need to work on it and, you know, I'm not going to climb up on the roof and I'm not going to get up on the top of this pole to work on it later on. So now it's a little bit of trouble to do this, but, and that's all bolted through the studs in the side of the house there too. I've got it pretty, pretty solid. Now I can basically let this cable out and this whole mass will pivot down all the way to the ground low enough for me to get to it and work on the antenna if I want to change it out or uh, if it gets hit by lightning, I have to change a little arrestor I have on the antenna or anything like that. So I want to show you what I did. And it was, this was my design from looking at others that had built things uh, on YouTube. I didn't see any quite like this, so I thought I might put it on there just to try to help the next guy. And I just bought these materials at a local uh, steel store. And I designed it myself and cut it up and welded it up myself and uh, it seems to work really good I mean because with it pivoting way down at the bottom where this bolt is it allows this bracket to swing out now this end here will, will actually touch that's the part that will touch and I could have shortened that a little bit more it would allow it to go even further down to the ground right now with the mass fully down and this plate touching on the bottom of this uh, 
support beam here. My antenna is about probably about five foot off the ground, but I can still get to it and work on it. That's not an issue. Uh, but I certainly don't want to support it from there. I just I just let it down, and when I do let it down, I'll put a can with a cardboard box or something to catch it out there where uh, I certainly don't want to try to support it just from this base. You know, I want to always have some kind of support out about where my cable is. I may just leave the cable a little tight when I let it down. Uh, but I'll also put something under it just to relieve the, the strain on that pole. So, so far it looks pretty good. I think it's working real good. Uh, the brackets and all. I got this uh, antenna, if you're interested, from a place called 3starinc.com. That's three, a number three, and then starinc.com. They're out of Virginia. And the first one I went to order, they showed shipping of $175. And I canceled my order because I wasn't going to pay $175 for shipping for the mast. Um, so I called them. I'm sure they had an option like the, that you could uh, UPS or something. And sure enough, they had this run, this uh, 850 model, a 9H50. And it collapses down to, this is the lowest joint here. And this is only about, even installed in here, it's, it's a little bit around six foot probably. So this whole thing collapses down into about a six foot tall box so they could UPS it my shipping was about 30 something dollars like 33 dollars so that that put it back in the ballpark so I'm glad I went this way because this this is USA ma uh, made mast and the way they crimp these pipes in here and you know they have some crimps in here to keep it tight inside there and it pulls out okay I cleaned it with some mineral spirits just to clean it off because people were saying you know you get stuff on your hands and all and I did want to clean it but I always wore gloves when I mess with it because obviously you're sliding a pipe inside of another pipe it'll tend to bind sometime and these little brackets here once you get it in place you can just lock these that will loosen up a little bit you can lock these brackets down to just kind of winch it on down there and all the other ones are tight already all the way up so i just thought i'd share that with you and uh maybe it'll help the next guy and uh you can get some ideas of your own how to do this so the little winch from eTrailer.com that was only shoot i think 25 28 dollars it wasn't much so it really and it's again it's american made winch uh, i forget the brand offhand but uh very pleased with it it's a little boat trailer winch and it's a single speed so it's not super fast up or down, but that's okay. But it's more of a maintenance thing uh, from my standpoint. So as you can see, this mass just sits in behind this piece of channel here, and then it's bolted in in two places so that it's not gonna go anywhere. And then the bolt that pivots, it's actually a half inch, half inch bolt so that it made a good pivot point by putting it lower like that where it would help this bracket to pivot so anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you, see if I can help the next guy out a little bit. And i uh, really proud of the way it came out. So you guys have a great day and appreciate your other ideas that you post on there. So thanks.